you. Thank you. For otherwise known as the person who Ralph Northam refused to shake my hand. Well, you know, since we're so close to the Capitol, let's send a message to Governor Ralph Northam. First of all, I want him to know once again, I don't want to shake his hand. Because anybody who thinks it's okay to kill a baby, even after it has escaped from its mother's womb alive, I'm not interested in shaking his hand. In fact, there's only one thing, well, two things maybe, I'd like Ralph Northam to do with that hand. First of all, he could take that hand and resign from the governorship. And he could take that hand and wave goodbye. So since we're so close, let's send a message to him that will be heard all across the Commonwealth of Virginia. We're gonna to say together, Governor Northam, it's time to resign. Are you ready? One, two, three. Governor Northam, it's time to resign. And, 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 and folks, of all the hypocrisy, of all the hypocrisy, I tapped him, he, he wouldn't even acknowledge me and shake my hand, and then he wants to point the finger at Ed Gillespie and call him a racist, and now we find out that he's the one running around in a Ku Klux Klan uniform and blackface. You know, what hypocrisy. These liberals really think that they have a free pass to do and say whatever they want because they are liberals, when in fact they are the most condescending, paternalistic, racist individuals in this country because they think they own black people, they think they own Latino people, and it's time to tell them, you don't own us, we are our own people, and we will chart the course of our own lives. We will think for ourselves, we will write for ourselves, we will speak for ourselves. young faces. I see Candace Owens and, and, the, and the young people who have come out. I was with her last night. She has some young people in Williamsburg. I want to tell you young people something. Black, Latino, white, Asian, doesn't matter. I want to tell you something. Don't believe the socialist lie that you've got to have government and you've got to have a bunch of liberals or you can't make it in America. You are gifted, you are talented, you are capable, you have intellect, and you can do anything you want to do because this is the greatest nation on the face of the earth for fulfilling your God-given potential. Commonwealth of Virginia who supports infanticide when 37% of the babies aborted in the United States of America are aborted to black women. In New York City, it's 50%. There is a genocide going on against the black community. Margaret Sanger was a vicious racist who consorted with the Ku Klux Klan, who sympathized with Adolf Hitler, and had an idea that black people didn't deserve to live, neither did what she called feeble-minded or the weeds that needed to be pulled up. And yet, she and that vicious organization, as far as I'm concerned, they are the most effective racists that have ever existed on the face of the earth. They make the Ku Klux Klan look like child's play because they haven't killed thousands. They've killed millions of black babies, millions. Well, I'm telling you all, it's time, and I really believe this was a divine appointment, it's time to pull the cover off of these folks who think it's okay to kill babies and tell Americans we don't need to put them in power because if you won't protect an innocent child, don't tell me you're going to protect us. And so I just want you all to understand, we, we, and, and, and look, it does my heart so good to talk to young people in particular 
Because we are hearing that 48% of young people believe that socialism is the answer. Socialism that has killed millions of people. Socialism that has starved people. Socialism that has thrown Venezuela into absolute chaos today. And we've got a, a presidential candidate named Bernie Sanders who went to the Soviet Union and bragged about how much more they do for their people than we do for ours. And we're being told that we ought to buy into this Marxist, socialist, communist ideology. And I want you all to know something about me. I raised my hand in the United States Marine Corps in August of 1974. Yeah. I took an oath to the Constitution of the United States of America to preserve, protect, and defend it against all enemies, foreign and domestic. And right now, frankly, we've got some domestic enemies, and I want you all to know that oath never had an expiration date. And for those who want to turn this into a socialist country, not on our watch. Not on our watch. America will remain the land of the free because we are the home of the brave. And don't you dare let anybody cow you by calling you a racist or calling you a bigot or calling you a hater. I don't care what they call me. I'm going to stand up for America until I breathe my final breath. And I'll never back down. I will never give up. I will never give in. This is my country. And I love the United States of America. Because I have to believe that in the heart of every American, there beats, there beats a rhythm of patriotism. That they know that we do things here that nobody else has ever done. I know you all are looking at me as a speaker right now, and I've been a candidate for office, but I want you to see something different. I want you to see a foster kid who was born into a broken family and shipped around to foster homes until 18 months old and then stayed in a foster home until I was 10 years old. I was a street kid. I was a gang member. I was a petty thief. I was doing all the wrong things. And then something wonderful happened in my life. My father stepped back into my life at the age of 10 years old. He turned my life around. I, had, I was failing the fifth grade because I would barely go. I was busy hanging with my gang, and I almost failed out in fifth grade. I went from being an F student in fifth grade to being an A student in sixth grade. And folks, I have to tell you, it wasn't because of some liberal program. It wasn't because of some government program. It wasn't because of midnight basketball. It was because I had a dad who said to me, son, this is the United States of America. You can make of yourself anything you want to be. And I expect you to do something with your life. And I'm going to be the enforcer to make sure that you do. You want to know why I love this country? Because I know in most nations of the world, you're born into that circumstance, that's where you stay. But not in America. And so I want you all to know that we got a fight on our hands, but we're going to win. We're going to win. Because we're on the right side of this thing. That's why we're going to win. We're going to win because our founding fathers, and in spite of all the, 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 the nasty things that are said about them, our founding fathers bequeathed us a nation unlike any that's ever existed on the face of the earth. When they, when they penned the majestic words, we hold these truths to be self-evident. That all men are created equal and endowed by our creator with certain inalienable rights that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. That was a promise to every single one of us, regardless of color, even though everybody didn't understand that. You and I have inherited that promise, and that's what makes it possible for us to go to the heights to which our talents and gifts and abilities will take us. That's why a Candace Owens is possible. That's why an E.W. Jackson is possible. That's why you can make something of your life because of the promise that our founding fathers bequeathed us and we're not going to let anyone take that away. We're going to make sure that the posterity that follows us is given a nation of freedom and hope and opportunity and the ability to fulfill their God-given
given dreams because this is our vision and we're not going to give it up for anybody. Not for Bernie Sanders, not for Pocahontas, not for any of these folks. We are and always will be one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And let's fight for that and commit to fight for that principle until we breathe our final breath because that flag, that national anthem, that constitution, this United States of America is worth standing up and fighting for. God bless you all. God bless the United States of America.